Ever since I was a boy, I have enjoyed reading books about the French-Canadian voyageurs who paddled and portaged the canoe routes of the North Woods. My favorite stories are those written by George Marsh and illustrated by Frank Sconover, one of the giants of the golden age of American illustration. Both men knew and loved the North Woods through personal experience and their joint efforts in producing such classics as Sled Trails and White Waters are unmatched to this day in the creative art of the Northland. As a young man, I was fortunate enough to follow in the wake of my childhood heroes, the voyageurs. As a canoeman for Kiwaden Camps, Lake Dunmore, Vermont, and Kiwaden Wilderness Trips, Quebec, I paddled and portaged most of the waterways of New England and many of the major canoe routes of Ontario and Quebec, Canada. I had many great adventures, especially as a member of the 1963 Kiwaden Exploratory Trip. On this trip, for nine weeks, we paddled and portaged over 600 miles exploring virgin canoe routes, as well as rediscovering those used by the old-time voyageurs. The 1976 Mississippi East River trip was also memorable. This trip, guided by the famed Cree canoeman, Charlo Gunner of Mistassini Post, was the first and only time the river has been run in its entirety by non-Cree Indians. Journals and maps, photographs and trips to the North Woods, the songs of the voyageurs, and of course the work of the great North Woods artists, such as Frank Sconover, all inspire me today as I create pictures of North Woods canoeing. Two lines from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's The Song of Hiawatha provides the title for my favorite picture, To the Regions of the Homewind of the Northwest Wind, Kiwaden. My painting is modeled after one of Frank Sconover's illustrations. Over the years, I have never tired of reworking and exploring the possibilities of this picture. What follows is a short presentation of some of the techniques I use to create to the regions of the home wind of the northwest wind, Kiwaden. First, I work out a rough drawing, copy it on special plastic tracing paper, and then transfer the drawing to the leather. The leather I use is especially tanned for carving and tooling. I prefer to use a thick eight to nine ounce hide that enables me to cut deep and then to stamp a bold relief. Wetting the leather with water allows it to take an imprint when the drawing on the tracing paper is gone over with a pen. Once the drawing has been transferred to the leather, each of the lines has to be cut with a swivel knife. The 
Next, I use my beveler, back rounder, and modeling tools to create the desired relief. When the tooling is completed and after the leather is dry, it is mounted to a board. I use acrylic paints to color my picture. Over the years, I have developed an individual technique with the use of these paints. This technique added to the skills I learned from my first teacher, Frederick Dale Seminole, a Northern Cheyenne artist from Lame Deer, Montana, gives my art an individual and unique quality. A spray preservative is applied once the paint has dried. The picture is then framed and prepared for hanging. The North Woods has greatly changed from the days George Marsh and Frank Sconover first paddled them. Indeed, most of the areas that I canoed have been altered. Civilization has spread, forests have been cut down, dams have been built, creating new reservoirs and rivers while drying up lakes and streams that had existed for centuries. The days of classic wilderness canoeing and wooden canvas canoes, which lasted throughout my adventures, are all but over. And one who has paddled and portaged much of the North Woods can appreciate the melancholy voyager song of George Marsh, entitled The Old Canoe. The old canoe. My seams gape wide, so I'm tossed aside to rot on the lonely shore, while the leaves and the mold like a shroud enfold, for the last of my trails are o'er. But I float in dreams on Northwood streams that never again I'll see, as I lie on the marge of the old portage with grief for company. When the sunset gilds the timbered hills that guard Tomogamy, and the moonbeams play on far James Bay by the brink of the frozen sea. In phantom guise, my spirit flies as the dream blades dip and swing, where the waters flow from the long ago in the spell of the beckoning spring. Do the cow moose call on Montreal when the first frost bites the air, and the mists unfold from the red and gold that the autumn ridges wear? When the white falls roar as they did of yore, on the Lady Avalon, do the square tail leap from the black pools deep where the pictured rocks begin? Oh, the fur fleets sing on Temiskaming as the ashen paddles bend, and the crews carouse at Rupert House at the sullen winter's end. But my days are done where the lean wolves run, and I ripple no more the path where the gray geese race across the red moon's face from the white wind's arctic wrath. Though the death fraught way from the Saguenay 
to the storied Nipiyong. Once knew me well, now a crumbling shell, I watch the years roll on. While in memory's haze I live the days that forever are gone from me, as I rot on the marge of the old portage with grief for company. However sad but true is George Marr's song, The Old Canoe, happily the gleam of paddles on northern lakes and rivers continue. The possibilities of new adventures in the north woods remains. Today's canoemen, traveling in aluminum, fiberglass, and other canoes of man-made material, in their own way keep alive the songs of the voyageurs by exploring the lakes and rivers known in days of yore. Best of all, they still paddle through territory as yet unknown to man. And after they return home, exploits of their trips to the regions of the home wind of the northwest wind Kiwaden resound in the hall of the rendezvous ever after. Selva, 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 selva,